Hello, welcome to Strawberry Land Farm, take two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In, a, in the world you will have tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Yeah, take heart, he has overcome the world, and we are podcasting or video casting whatever you call it from my room because i think i've overcome it um as you guys noticed i've been kind of absent for the last two weeks um every waking moment i have been working on this uh i have a plan it's looking much better in here um you know this is after so many years on the farm, it's hard to downsize, let alone downsize to a very small one bedroom. Um, I mean, I have things throughout the house, but this is the bulk of my stuff. And so it's, it, it's very hard to downsize to this size, but all right. So first we're going to talk about, um, what I have been working on in the evening and that is the purple uh, sweater. Uh, if you remember, I was doing it off of one of the patterns in the book that I got at Christmas. About to pull out a stitch. So, um, I have the two front panels done this size. I have one more of these sections to do down here. I've got like two of the three, I say sections because they're not, each section is two rows. So I've got two rows to do just to get to where I need to be. So I've got about four rows left on this one and then they'll be ready to do the bottom part, which is all worked as together. So um, I'll be sewing those together and doing that bottom flared part of it so i have that that i worked on and then since it's taken me two weeks to get this done and i'll explain why here in a little bit um yesterday i like the thought of being able to come in and find what i needed so um i came in and i had these scraps so i made a pothole this one does not have the binding on it because i couldn't find anything i couldn't find I found all my bindings. I could not find black, white, or red, which I thought would look good with this. So, um, these I just made with the extra stuff from the quilt. And so they're just pot holders. Um, just plain, just plain. And we needed pot holders. So, you know, hi, what the heck? Um, this one is scraps from pajamas from you from last year so yeah but I wanted some cute binding I didn't have white black or red and that's what I thought would look best with it so yeah it is what it is I have to finish it off but um okay so let's discuss this room first things first okay now I'm gonna try and do this in a way that doesn't make y'all dizzy so I bought a set of shelves Okay, I measured them and I bought them. All right, and this is what I've been working on literally for weeks. Okay, so I have these three totes. The bottom tote has fleece in it. This tote has projects I need to finish in it. And this one right here still has to be sorted. Now my goal is to get them because they seed inside each other, um, is when one gets empty, going to go down to the bottom and you know and be in the thing so I also all of these boxes up here sorry try not to make y'all dizzy all of these boxes up here are empty and for Christmas stuff so if I need them fine if not then they'll go to the trash this whole shelf is clear I still have space to put stuff up there which may change this right here okay 
Um, I was thinking I might put all the little shoe boxes and that kind of stuff up there. I don't know yet. Um, this is my dye. This is my dye. That's my dye. It's kind of like my dyeing stuff. And then this is my drop spindles, my, uh, right. And this is all patterns. I need to get it labeled, but this has got patterns in it. Okay. Patterns that I've made, patterns that I've bought, patterns that were gifted to me, just patterns. And they're just laying in there. They're not organized or anything. So, um, anyway, so let me tell you, <laughs> I have a little stack of stuff right here. That is the donate right there. Okay. I have my shoes I have to deal with. Um, they did line up underneath the bed, but there's a long story to that. I have to fix them. And this right here is Christmas and wedding. So this box down here has Christmas presents in it. This bag has Christmas, has wedding stuff in it. And this bag right here is Christmas phone holders that I made for the office. So all of this that's sitting on the floor will go away. Okay. Um, this, the stupid food processor is too tall to go anywhere. And so I just, ugh, it's griping me, but yeah, it doesn't really go in here, but it doesn't have, there's not room in the kitchen. So, you know, roommate has roommates and I have mine. Yeah. Anyway, so, um. And then, of course, over here, I've got my, uh, two carters and my books that I need every morning. So, but anyway, so, yeah, it, it literally, I had everything out of the totes and everything on the bed for two weeks. I thought I could do it in one day like one weekend and I ended up um not being able oh come on focus there we go I ended up not being able to use this bedroom at all for two weeks um yeah so it is what it is now I've got my baby back I've got my stuff that is going to be donated the first of September I'm going to donate and I'm going to also go through this top tote. I still have some things in there. And when I say it, the top tote, um, like I did a, a project where I needed, ooh, I'm sorry, I needed some moss to go around some plants. Well, you have to buy a whole thing for $2.99. Not bad. Okay. But then you use moss at it. Now I have a package of, of, three-fourths of the moss left and so what do you do with the moss I don't want to throw it away I don't need it anymore and so that's the kind of stuff that's in that top tote and once I get it cleaned out um I am literally thinking that I am going to start working on the projects and get those gone um yeah it is what it is. So, but in amidst all of this, um, RJ, as you know, has been traveling. He was in Nebraska, Montana, Dakota, South Dakota. Um, him and a group of friends went up there and were rodeo -er and making the rodeo circuit. And somehow, um, even the doctors are not sure at this point how. Um, RJ's hand, I'll just tell the story as it goes. So RJ's hand just started for no reason to swell. Now he's right handed, but you have to use both your hands when you rope. And on Friday night or Thursday night, it got stiff. By Friday, it started to swell. Um, Pro Rodeo provides a doctor on site. He had taken and gone to the doctors on site um, twice to let them look at his hand 
uh, it just started to swell and, and we weren't sure what was going on. It, it uh, turned a yellowy, you know, he was up in Haven, Havers. Uh, he was like, I think it's 17 miles from the Canadian border. Anyway, he uh, ended up by Saturday. He couldn't rope with it. It hurt so bad that, I mean, it just throbbed. He ended up going to the emergency room, and uh, the doctor said that he had infection in it. Well, there's no wound. He, he didn't get a, a, a little cut, and it get infected. So the best that they can figure, now this guy, they had to lance it open. Um, he just kind of picked the spot where he thought the pressure was coming from, and he lanced it open, and Arjun's hand started to drain. And, uh, so he's on some painkillers. He's on, which he's not taking. RJ doesn't take a lot of medicine. I did make, insist that he take the antibiotic. He's got, you know, stuff for pain, antibiotic, and stuff for inflammation. And I told him I wanted him to take the antibiotic. Um, inflammation he should. And the painkillers, I didn't care. And he looked at me and goes, you know, I'm not taking those. And I said, yeah, pretty sure, but hey, <laughs> it's okay. Um, but anyway, he uh, ended up using a doctor's note and drawing out. And yes, a doctor's note is required to draw out of the fur rodeo without fees and fines and all of that. Um, remember, fur rodeo is a job. And just like any job, you have to draw out, but you have to have a legitimate reason. So he was supposed to be up there um, this last week, and he was not. He he ended up having to come home, which disappointed him. He had some rodeos planned and all that, but his hand, he couldn't hardly move it. Um, I saw him Wednesday. He finally got here. Um, he came down to, and we pulled some fuses in his truck. He couldn't use his hand to pull the fuses. And when you're one-handed and you need two hands to get those little dinky things with the needle nose pliers, you can't do it with one hand. So anyway, he blew a fuse on the truck. We took volt regulator and found out which one and replaced it and all that. So we spent Wednesday night, I fed him and, uh, and we talked about his hand, and, you know, it's it better to be safe than sorry. So, uh, anyway, um, he was getting to where he could start to bend it. Um, he couldn't, when he went, finally went to the doctor, you know, not the pro-rodeo doctor, but actually went to the emergency room, um, all he could do was move his thumb. So, yeah, it was... Anyway, Wednesday night, he came down. We worked on his truck, got it going. Um, and there's nothing wrong with the tra The trailer lights blew. It just wasn't uh, one of the fuses that runs the trailer lights. And so he tried switching trailers. And, of course, with the fuse out, it didn't matter what trailer he put on there. So all the lights were out. But anyway, um, so he uh, was down here Wednesday. This room was still tore apart. But, uh, yeah, which that was a feat in itself. So consider that an RJ update. Um, he is back home and he is healing up. Once he can get the motion back in his hand, finish his antibiotic and um, <clears throat> get the wound that's where they lanced it because it's right on his hand. And once that heals up, then it'll be okay. So, he'll be back to roping. But anyway, um, in the midst of all that, like I said, I had tore everything out and put it all on this half of the room. And you couldn't even get around in here. And that was just to build the shelves. And then I got those shelves built. But then I had to sort through and start getting stuff cleaned up. And, and I started with all the totes and getting them over there. And... 
because I only have a few minutes after work, I spent all day. So the shelves didn't come until Saturday evening on the first weekend. And so Sunday, I got the shelves up and I got some of the stuff, some of the stuff put over there, but I didn't have anything sorted. I wanted to go through and sort out everything. So I've got like one box of it. That's all yarn. That's it. The two boxes on top are stuff for the tiny home. And then my polyfill. Okay, it just takes up too much room, but it's super light, so you can go up to the top. Uh, I've got my serger thread. I've got my uh, sewing stuff where I can get to it. Oh, excuse me. I've got uh, scraps. I have to get another tote for fabric because I still have, in this one to clean out, I still have some different, 630, um, I still have some different fabrics that are not cotton. That is just the cotton that I have over there, and I have one for batting, and I have my um, spinning tools, uh, my hand carters and that kind of stuff in the one tote, and so I've been working on it and getting it. I've got my uh, bindings and ribbons and all that in one little tote. I've got all my zippers in a tote. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of projects I got to finish, and those two actually go in the project tote, but I couldn't get to the project tote. So, yeah. Um, and my goal for next year is once I get this all, get through Christmas, get this, um, is to have this other tote empty to finish the projects that are in there. Um, some of just have, I've got a, a little baby quilt in there that I just need to put the finishing strip on and then literally crochet two rows around. But I don't have anybody having a baby, so it's like, eh, move down to the next project. So I'm going to finish all of those and get rid of that tote. So yeah, that's a goal. Anyway, all right, I'm going to get off of here. Uh, like I said, it's been a mess. This is back to my room. I probably won't podcast from in here again. I just wanted y'all to see that, you know, while everything was over here, everything, yeah, it's much better now. So, um, it's still a work in progress. Like I said, I want to get rid of the totes. That's Christmas and wedding. Those get, uh, donated. My shoes, I just got to find a better way to stack them. I was hoping to be able to use that rack to stand it up and put it over in that corner and then have, you know, one, two, three, four, five pairs up there. And then, um, yeah, so we'll see. But I'll figure it out. Just take time. So, all right. I will talk to y'all later. Um, send RJ any prayers. It is storming. It's a, uh, it's supposed to be in the 90s, but for right now, it's been storming since thunder lightning since about one o'clock this morning so hitch is not happy <laughs> but anyway back to using this room thank you lord oh it was a lot of work guys it really was and it took me twice as long as i thought it would so yeah have a great week thanks for watching god bless